All right. Uh, of the last four of these macroscopic symmetry operations, uh, we're going to talk about roto inversion. So that's what uh, we're going to finish up with here. All right. So roto inversions. So as you might imagine from the name, it's a combination of a rotation and an inversion. And the important thing to note here is that when we're talking about a single symmetry operation, since this is a roto inversion, it has to have both the rot uh, rotation and the inversion. So it, we're not separating them out in the individual operation. And so that'll come up here in a second. But we have to, as you might imagine, we have to have a rotation axis and an inversion center. All right, so let's go back and look at the threefold rotation. So I'm gonna draw my circle. This was my rotational axis. Again, it's it's out of the plane here. That's my rotational axis. Um, I can draw a point here. Then it's rotated uh, 120 to there. Another 120 rotated here, and then another 120. And it's rot rotated back. Right. So if we're talking about a threefold roto inversion, then I'm going to draw it. So I've got a, a triangle again, but I'm actually going to put a circle in. So that represents my inversion center. So basically I leave a hole in the middle to represent the roto inversion. So the way that this starts is, again, we can imagine an arbitrary point in this space um, our rotational axis is the same way that we've been talking about and our inversion center is the origin at the center of this circle or if you think about it in three dimensions the sphere right so we have to have the combination of both of these types of rotation and inversion so when i have a threefold roto inversion then what's going to happen is the first part of my operation is going to be to rotate this 120 degrees. So I rotate it 120 degrees. That takes me to about right there. But this isn't the end of the operation because I have to have both, right? So I'm not drawing a point because before I do that, I have to invert it, right? So now this is the solid, so it means it's positive. Uh, so right now it would still be positive, but I'm going to invert it through the center over to this point, right? And in this point, it's going to be negative because everything is uh, made negative uh, with that vector that we talked about, right? So only after the rotation and the inversion do I draw a point, right? So that would be the completion of one symmetry operation, rotation, plus inversion to get me to this point. And then I can continue doing this until I become self-coincidence with the original point. So this would be my first uh, point. Then I can do another um, rotation of uh, 120. So that would put me somewhere right here. And then I would uh, go through the inversion, which, so basically 120, and then invert and since i'm negative i'd still be negative here so this is going to be a plus over here All right so that's my second point or third one two three so rotation inversion rotation inversion and i can keep doing that until i complete the um the diagram here so in this case um, if I wanted to keep going, I would rotate 120, that would put me here, and then invert, and I'd be back here, and this would be open circle. Uh, rotate again, still uh, open circle, and then going back here, and it would switch and invert it, so it'd be positive here, and then rotate 120 and invert, and I would have an open circle 
here. So if I just kind of clean that up without the the mark all the markings here to show you what that looks like. All right. So I would have open circles or sorry, solid circles here and open circles here. And that would complete all the rotations and get me back to the original point here. So if I keep following this, I'll get this uh, appearance. And so this is a threefold roto inversion. Uh, we sometimes shorten this to just say three. And then if we have a uh, threefold roto inversion, this would be three with a bar over it for the inversion. But it's also, you can, you can identify it by this symbol or also the three uh, with a bar over it. All right, so uh, the next question on your quiz is going to be roto inversions for the other um, for the other types of fold rotation. So a one, a one fold roto inversion, a two fold roto inversion, a four fold, and a six fold. So basically, draw your circle, make an arbitrary point and see if you can um, go through and find those uh, roto inversions and draw like you would up here. All right, to go back and let's look over those quiz uh, solutions for the ones out the for the roto inversions I was looking for. So we have a one fold roto inversion, two fold, four fold, and six fold. So I went ahead and drew the sort of circle that represents this uh, drawing, a projection, um, the arbitrary point, this open circle. Uh, what we find out is that a one-fold roto inversion is the same as an inversion center. So we'll walk through this. Um, two-fold, we represent that as ellipses with the open circle. Four-fold uh, is this uh, basically square with an ellipses, and then a uh, hexagon with a triangle for the six-fold. So let's go through and just kind of work these out. So uh, a one-fold roto inversion, uh, if you're thinking about the rotation, uh, 360 divided by one is still 360. So essentially, I'm rotating all the way around back to the original point and then going through the inversion center. And so that's going to put an open circle. So I'm inverting through that point to over here, right? So this was a plus, this is a minus. So this is the same as an inversion. So we call it a one fold rotation uh, roto inversion, but it's also just an inversion because again, that one is the identity. All right, so let's look at two. So now we have a 180 rotation and so if we think about the 180 rotation that would put a point over on this side it still has the same um, positive negative so it's positive but we also have to invert and so inverting put it puts it back over here but it's below the axis so I draw an open circle So then the second operation to, to get back to the same point, I'm not there yet because one of the points is above this axis, one of them is below. So it's not the same point yet. So if I start with that and rotate again 180 and then invert, that's going to put me back at the original place. So a twofold um, has two operations here to get back to the original. But this is what it's going to look like. We have a positive and a negative point at the same projection in space here. All right, fourfold, uh, my rotation is 90, right? So that puts me, my rotation somewhere around here, right? But then I have to invert. So that's gonna put me over here. And so that would be an open circle because I'm rotating, still positive, but then I invert and it's negative. Then if I do another rotation, same direction, and then rotate, or sorry, invert, that's going to put me over here, but now it's positive again. And then if I do it again, rotate, 
the 90 degrees, uh, still positive, and then invert, it's going to be open circle. And then if I, so I'm still not back yet, so I want to, I'm at negative right now, so if I rotate 90 degrees uh, and then invert, it's going to put me back at the original position. So it's going to look something like this. Lastly, if I do a uh, six fold, we know that the, the rotation component is 60 degrees. And so that puts me at a rotation of somewhere. So counterclockwise puts me around here. I'm still positive. And then when I invert, that's going to be open circle. If I do another 60 degree and then invert, uh, I'm going to be positive over here. Another 60 degrees, halfway between these points. I'm positive still, but then I'm going to invert. And so I'm going to have an open circle over here. And then another negative, and then it's going to go positive through the inversion. And then another 60 degrees and invert. It's going to put me here. So this, uh, and then one more, and I'd get back to the original position because I'm going to rotate um, and then go through the inversion. So um, this is what a six fold roto inversion would look like.